So if you're yet to start that conversation with your kids, maybe looking for a little advice, joining us today is psychologist and mind and body expert Leanne Hall. Welcome to our team, Leanne. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. How do we know as parents when kids are ready for these mm. kind of discussions? Look, it's a tough question. In short, we don't. But I think what we can do as parents is regularly check in and see what they already know. Mm. So often it's creating opportunities for regular conversations around the dinner table, get them when they're in the car on the way to soccer or footy training, and just have those regular check-in chats. And I think often we think that kids are going to come to us with the questions. Mm. More often than not, they don't. They sit right. there and they kind of hold it in. Huh. Now, an issue I know I'll have with these conversations is sharing too much information. <laughs> How much is too much? I think you answer simply. Less is more, and I think the younger the child, the less information. And let's face it, their attention spans are often kind of onto the next thing anyway. So I think really we use what it, however they ask the question to us, we just model back and give them just what they're asking and no more. Very tempting to go into detail, but often that's what bamboozles kids and then they get confused. Right. Okay, something that feels a little bit out of our hands as parents mm. is protecting our kids from cyberbullying. How mm. do we approach that one? Look. I think we hear all sorts of things about setting limits around technology use and I think all of that is fantastic but I think that there are wonderful things that social media can kind of bring to us and I think kids in particular, more sort of teenagers, get lots of benefits from it. So as parents, it's our responsibility to understand what our kids are doing and what our teenagers are doing on social media, get involved and understand what they're doing. But does that mean kind of prying over their shoulders mm. a little bit? No, or? it's a fine line. You yeah. want to respect privacy but they are kids. So yeah. often I will say to my kids when my daughter reached an age where she wanted Facebook and all those things. Yeah. I said, well, you need to add me as a friend, but I promise I won't pry, I won't make inappropriate comments, comments. on your posts, yeah. I won't stalk you, but at least her knowing that I'm there means that there is a bit of a filter and she gets used to knowing that I'm in the background looking okay. over her shoulder. And okay. do you feel that younger children are dealing with body image issues and that type of thing as well? I see kids as young as kindergarten age, no. absolutely, talking about feeling fat and it's really, really concerning. It's hitting kids a lot younger and boys as well. Um, a lot of that is partly because of social media but not yes. driven by it. I think it's an influencing factor but it's not the only factor. I think as parents it's our responsibility to role model that appropriate behaviour and have you know, balanced diet, um, no such, such thing as bad food and actually not overvalue appearance. I think that's where a lot of it's coming yeah. from. Okay, now they're going to come at us with all sorts of questions, <laughs> aren't they? What if we as parents feel a little bit embarrassed to maybe try and answer some of these curly questions that come at most mostly inappropriate yeah. times. <laughs> there are two emotions I think kids can smell. One is fear and one is anxiety. So I think as a parent, if we're anxious about that, that is what's going to not upset our kids, but that's what's going to generate anxiety for them. Really important that we take a deep breath and be look confident, at how, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Be confident and try not to judge because kids often don't come to us with questions because they're worried about how we're going to react. So if we kind of just role model that behaviour where we say, look, we're open, let's chat about it, then walk into the next room and have a meltdown, but not in front of them, yes. then they're going to be more confident and to open up. We want them to come to us that, rather than Google. Absolutely. Right, that's a scarier place it to sure go. Is. Yeah. It sure is. It sure is. I mean, we're starting to get little probing questions in our household, little ones, you know, the sort of kind of sex questions. How, how are yeah. twins born? And, you know, so... That's a really complicated I know, question. I know, I know, and I didn't yeah. know how much to reveal, but you're saying just answer it kind of confidently, matter-of-factly, that'll reflect the sort of uh, yeah. answer. Yeah. Kids have their own meanings on things and often we feel that we're giving them too much because of our own interpretations and meanings, which is filtered through our own experience. But I think sometimes by just answering something simply, I often said to my kids, I'll never lie to you. So if they ask me a question, I will never lie. I will just give them a proportion of the truth, if that makes sense. So according to their age. Okay, the talks, they're inevitable. Just I'm excited. I am excited. Final quick take-home message for parents around these things? Yep, create regular opportunities for discussion about stuff. It doesn't have to be the difficult things, but yeah. if you're talking to your kids around the dinner table, mm. you're engaging with them, you're showing an interest in what they do, and you're not judging the information they're giving back to you, what you're doing there is paving the way for them to feel confident to ask you things. Great advice, Leanne. So great to have you with us on the team. Thank you.